Until recently, we had very little information regarding one of the most mysterious and feared creations of humanity. Throughout the Imperium of Mankind, information, even about ordinary matters, is often muddled, misrepresented, or just plain mistruths. For many, your reality is what the Imperium tells you, or more accurately, what it doesn't tell you. There are innumerable worlds across the galaxy that are not even aware they are part of the Imperium because they have either just been forgotten, lost, or were never even rediscovered by the Emperor's Great Crusades. Within the upper levels of Imperial structure though, information on specifics are closely guarded. Administrators, the Inquisition, Mechanicus, and various other institutions aggressively protect the knowledge of humanity from falling into the hands of those who could seek to use it against them, including their own kind. Since the heresy, paranoia, doubt and fanaticism have not died down, for much of the Imperium figures like the Astartes are almost mythical. Within the realm of a human lifespan, many citizens of the Imperium will never lay eyes on a space marine of the Imperium, let alone a Titan. So when you come to the Psy Titans, the rarest sub-creations of the gargantuan war machines of the Mechanicus or Mechanicum, it's probably few if any humans who have laid eyes upon them, and for that matter, few princeps. There are sightings known to have been seen pre-heresy, but largely the first reports of them come from around the heresy as the wars between traitor and loyalist became ever more intense. As in this time, the Titan legions needed something that would give them a leading edge when fighting their wars which would consume entire worlds, leaving only the smouldering molten remains of godlike titans punctuating a planet's surface. However, their appearance alongside Titan legions can be something of a misdirection, because they do not operate under the banner of the Mechanicum or the Titan legions in any way. In fact, unusually for titans, they seem to operate almost independently. The Emperor, in his great wisdom, foresaw the need for future weapons of every kind and design, and in this he had begun to experiment with weapons of machinery long considered forbidden, and especially when it came to the need to utilise emerging psychers. It's important to remember that for much of humanity, psychers were seen with fear and extreme prejudice, because they had been regarded as are many things by ordinary citizens with extreme ignorance and fear. In fairness though, this wasn't some logical reasoning. During the Age of Strife, across many worlds, Psychers were consumed by their connection to the warp, and entire worlds were destroyed as psychers created a gateway for the horrors of the Immaterium to enter our real space and enslave or destroy entire planet's populations. So during the age of the Imperium, emergent psychers were also seen as being dangerous and something to be greatly feared, and they still are even in the modern Imperium. Most emergent psychers are rounded up and then loaded onto mysterious black ships of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica not to be confused with the more standardised black ships of the Inquisition. The black ships of the Telepathica are vessels used in transporting large numbers of untrained psychers, and again very little is known about this organisation and its operation, but despite being barely spoken of, the black ships actually form the second largest fleet in the galaxy. The operation of collecting and transporting emergent psychers to Terra is almost universally unknown. Only planetary governors and ranking administrators will need to have any involvement with it, and it is again one of the dark unspoken activities carried out within the Imperium. Its true scale is likely horrifying, as many hundreds of thousands of psychers are continually rounded up across the galactic empire of the Imperium and shipped back to Terra for either conversion to an Imperial psyker or sacrifice for the Emperor. The ships themselves are sad, miserable places. Within the bowels of the vast size shielded holds, untrained psychers are unceremoniously dumped, where they will remain for months, if not years, at a time aboard the ships as they travel around the galaxy collecting their cargo. Being in close proximity to so many other psychers is for most completely intolerable, as their thoughts and psychic visions and experimental powers combine into one mass consciousness, and for most this is an entirely unbearable experience. The ships will only return to Terra once their quota is fulfilled. Many of the psychers will be extensively traumatised and therefore only then usable as fuel for the all-consuming soul of the Emperor. The psychers though will be initially graded as they're loaded aboard the ships and so those who have more control over their abilities or are perhaps more powerful will be placed alongside those similar to them and are more likely to survive the ordeal. The process bears some similarity to the trials undergone by recruits for the Imperial Assassin program, whereby its young adolescent applicants are left aboard cold, dark space vessels and then engage in a form of savage battle royale. Upon arrival at their training centre, only those who have survived the experience will be then evaluated for training. For the rogue psychers, this experience is much the same, where only the strongest mental willpower and control of their abilities will enable them to reach terror with their sanity intact. 
Because of the challenging environment of psychic powers aboard the black ships, they are not crewed by ordinary members of the Imperial Navy, nor do they operate as part of it. They are instead crewed by only those with strictly assessed mental fortitude who will form the crew of a black ship. Because these crew members will be continually bombarded by the emanations of its imprisoned psychers and their feelings of despair and trauma. The crew will be equipped with anti-psychic weaponry so as to control the psychers aboard and are recruited from only a few worlds near to Terra itself. The Telepathica have tithe contracts with these worlds to ensure that they have a consistent supply of crew, but little is known to the process of training these indentured workers. The most senior and important members of the ship's crew are what are known as Nulls or Blanks. They are the Sisters of Silence, and they are members of the military wing of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica, and while they are technically part of this group, they are similarly to the Inquisition largely autonomous and only truly answer to the Emperor, because they are exceptionally rare forms of human who have zero presence within the warp. Nulls or Blanks have no registered psychic presence, and so they will passively disrupt psychic phenomena around them, and this also makes them completely immune to psychic or warp powers. In fact, their literal presence is even painful to demons and creatures which will rely heavily on psychic powers. And this presence is only made worse for a demon or a xenos who uses psychic ability, because just being close to the null aura of a sister of science will actually, as the word suggests, nullify their powers, making them then useless. This is what makes the sisters so powerful, as they can then easily slaughter psychers or creatures who, for other figures far more powerful than themselves, will actually struggle to defeat their foes. A lot of a demon's power, or a demon prince's power and so on, is given by the warp. It's not just latently in themselves, because you have to remember that demons are essentially warp material, psychically extended from the warp. So without that power, they're extremely weak. But the presence of a Null can be troubling beyond the enemies of mankind. In fact, for anybody with what we would call a soul, that is, a faint element within them of psychic resonance, the mere presence of a Null or a Blank will evoke feelings in them of unease and even hostility. That scratchy feeling where you just cannot sit still or rest, or worse, maybe you feel like you just want to rip your skin off and run away from the space that you're in. For psychers, this feeling is multiplied hundreds of times over. However, the effect of nulls on ordinary humans is important evidence that psychers are not the only ones with psychic presence in humanity. And this is actually a very important detail which illustrates the importance of humanity to the gods of chaos. It's often mistakenly assumed that psychers with very literal visible ability represent the only figures in humanity who have such powers. This is not the case. In fact, it seems to be that actually all humans have at least some psychic resonance. That's their soul. And this is why humans are such valuable fuel material for the immaterium. This is an important and regularly unrecognized fact when it comes to discussing chaos, the warp, the relationship of humanity to it, and why it's so pressured and focused upon by chaos. But I'll get more into that in another video soon. You know what I'm talking about. Moving on. There are others within the Imperium who will make use of blanks, of course, like the Calexus Assassins, they are Psyker Hunters, the Inquisition, and of course, the Ordo Sinister, or Sinister. This is always the case, never 100% sure on the pronunciation. I'm going to go with Ordo Sinister. Scattered fragments of record point toward the Ordo as being created somewhere around 967 of M30. The Emperor is believed to have given a supply order to the Mechanicum of Mars to produce for him 25 Warlord-class Titans, but there is no recorded reason as to why this request was given. But it is suspected that the nature of this was the original creation of the Ordo Sinister. By the beginning of the Heresy, it had been stated that four fortress-like crypts on Terra contained divided between them 20 Warlord Titans, and they were believed to have been ordered to remain on Terra, and this is all that is known of them. However, it is suspected that they did not remain on Terra, and that they in fact played a significant role in fighting the traitors across the galaxy, and that they are in fact what are known as Psy Titans. Their creation may have had little to do with the coming heresy. Although the Emperor was undoubtedly aware of the primordial truth and the existence of the horrors in the warp, we know he actively attempted to shield humanity from this knowledge. Instead, the creation of the Ordo Sinister and Psy Titans are believed to have been in response to other incidents to counter disturbing assaults from entities such as the Enslaver Alpha Incursions, the Rangdon Ossivores, and Hellspont Voidforms. 
These incidents claimed millions of lives and all but destroyed entire expeditionary fleets of the burgeoning Imperium. Most notably, they even claimed heavy casualties of Titans, which greatly disturbed the Emperor and presumably triggered his new project to forge the Psy Titans as a counter for such potential events. But in order to do so, the Emperor had to keep these creations entirely restricted and all knowledge of their purpose and operations suppressed, because the technology and understanding of such things had been already forbidden to all, and this is likely why there was no record or reasoning given to the construction and assignment of these Titans. Additionally, their weaponry had its origins in the Dark Age of Technology, where humanity had a much more comfortable relationship in terms of the integration of psychic human powers and technology, something which is largely unthinkable today. But these weapons are known as Sinistrum, a term given to designate weapons which will artificially amplify human psychic power but potentially risk consuming the psyche themselves in the process. The Emperor had used such things during the Unification Wars with enslaved Psyker Covens. The ordering of these 25 Titans, however, was no small matter. In fact, it created fractures within the Mechanicum at the time, because while many believed the Emperor to be the one true Omnissire whose will should be obeyed and worshipped, there were also those who saw him with more scepticism, even the relationship between the Mechanicum and the Emperor, to have a more political edge. That is to say, what were his underlying reasons for this request? Many in the Mechanicum believed Titans to be absolutely sacred creations of their own, and none other than members of the Mechanicum should be authorised to work upon or be honoured enough to maintain them. And it's difficult to know just how much this event resonated throughout the Mechanicum, especially in light of what would occur later along the line, but it's entirely possible that it was this request by the Emperor which triggered a slow burning discontent within the Mechanicum and the belief by many in its higher political echelons that the Emperor had suppressed their bid for independence and that this small crack in the relationship between the Imperial Emperor and the Mechanicum would slowly open up a gaping wound that would allow the insidious infection of chaos and divide the Mechanicum and drag it into the civil war of the heresy. Some within the cult of the machine labelled this event as the Ablation. The first notable evidence of the Emperor's secretive operations came in the resolution of a rebellious situation upon the world of Skagen VI. The planet and its inhabitants had initially transitioned smoothly into becoming a part of the Imperium, yet this also caused rapid growth which would lead to instability so that around by 946 of M30, a factional civil war was exploding on the planet. And this is notably a time before what is believed by Imperial scholars to be the official founding of the Ordo Sinister, which they put at again 967. But this is a very muddy period in terms of dates and information. It could easily have already been established by this point. Regardless though, a fleet arrived to quell this instability, and this was a fairly unremarkable fleet of solar auxilia, if they can ever be described as unremarkable, except the fact that accompanying them was a Titan conveyor. In its cargo, a single Warlord Titan coloured with a deep green-black verdigris, its sigil a snarling lion's head. It bore no other markings of any known Titan Legion, but it carried the markings of Pavore Dominator, as well as what some believed to be its name of Polaris Albe de Lac, but the citizens just referred to it as the King of Terrors. As is often the case, few could really comprehend what such a machine was, where it originated from, or what its capabilities were. Its presence though certainly helped to quieten those who questioned the authority of the Emperor, or their absorption into the Empire of the Imperium. Fear would be a natural emotion to feel when looking upon such a monstrous creation, yet this titan seemed to not only cause fear, it exuded it like a chemical stream that permeated all in its presence. Some felt irrationally compelled to flee from it screaming in terror, but others lay prostrate in silence, gripped by an all-consuming terror. The titan marched through the city in unsettling silence, its presence alone quelling the disquiet, the loyal, and the trouble were all wrought with horrifying dreams of death and destruction. Rebels abandoned their arms and dispersed, and the rebellion had been crushed, with no shots ever having been fired. Psy Titans are also to have been reported seen later in an engagement of scale that was more typical of the darkest ten millennia of mankind. The forces of the Blood Angels Astartes and Titan Legio had struggled greatly against the Xenos foe of Eldar in what was known as the Defence of Helioret. This sector in around 960 M30 had been under attack by the Eldar Corsairs with extreme aggression and many planets falling to them. 
The Blood Angels even included their Primarch in the defensive response to the engagement, yet they still struggled against the Xenos. The Eldar wielded many of their own titans, including a greatly feared Warlock Titan known as the Witch Idol, which has been documented as having been encountered multiple times already, but so far the Imperium had failed at every attempt to repel these monstrosities. It was only when the Psy Titans were deployed that the Eldar force seemed to hesitate and give pause to consider what it was they were facing here. The Psy Titans unleashed volleys of rockets and turbo laser blasts, as would any standard Warlord. Yet from their left arm was situated before unseen weaponry, which poured forth a near invisible dark stream. Unlike almost all titanic weaponry, it was also disturbingly silent. Onlookers were stunned with confusion. Had it malfunctioned? Had such a god engine's weapon failed them at the most critical of times? The answer was soon revealed, as the shadowy blast from the Titan cut clean through the Eldar race. The blank stream of power devoured all that it touched, and the shockwave from the impact upon its main target cut down many more Xenos constructs, which simply fell to the floor as if pulled down by extreme force of gravity. Where they remained, they were quite simply dead, from what appeared to be an ambient wave of power that came from the Titan's psi weapon. The Eldar Titans reacted quickly to such an outrage. They had not seen a force such as this before from the Monkey, and the death of so many wraiths would have given them extreme outrage and grief had they not been already heavily suppressing their emotions, as do all Eldar in battle. Their counteraction only caused a much more powerful return from the Psy Titans, which floored yet more of the Eldar and even Astartes to the ground not dead, but hit by powerful shockwaves that they were unable to quantify. Both Xenos and mortal humans clashed in a struggle of titanic imperial forces that had never been seen before or documented by the Imperium. The battle was so intense and on a level far beyond anything that standard forces could have any meaningful impact upon that even the Primarch of the Blood Angels withdrew from the fight and brought his marines with him. They left the Xenos and Imperial Gods of War to resolve a conflict now fought on an entirely other level of power. It was proven to be a wise choice on the part of Sanguinius, as the Titans would battle on for hours. The scale and power of the forces they threw against one another were like nothing any of the Astartes had witnessed before. The Xenos Titans slashing against the Imperial's meter-thick Ceramite, which created open, slashed, gaping wounds that would then miraculously reform. It was a psychic battle of attrition, but eventually cracks would begin to emerge for the opposition to exploit. One of the Warlord Psy Titans fell when a Xenos blade impaled its reactor core, but despite this terrible loss, the nimble ghost-like Titan race of the Elder was slowly crumbling against the appalling darkness being deployed by the Psy Titans. Finally, when only the Witch Idol Titan of the Xenos remained, its attempts to outmaneuver the slower Imperial machines were in vain, as they suppressed it under heavy shockwaves of psychic power. One of the Psy Titans grabbed and secured the Eldar Titan by the shoulder as another Psy moved in, took hold of its headpiece, and simply tore it from its body, leaving the rest to fall to the floor like a broken toy doll. This final act of slaughter seemed to blind the remnants of the Eldar forces into launching an all-out suicide or assault, yet they were met only with the fury of the Blood Angels and Sisters of Silence, who cut them down in short order. Before the battle was even over, the Dark Titans had already withdrawn from battle, their mission complete, and they dragged their fallen Titan in tow. The remnants of the associated Xenos Craftworld were subsequently dragged into the system's sun to be permanently obliterated. The account of this engagement is largely attributed to the Blood Angels documentation and is one of the most complete records of Psy Titan engagements outside the campaigns of Shadow and Iron, where we also saw the inclusion of Psy Titans encountering the heretical traitor Titans of Legio Infernus and Ordax. Other accounts have less credibility or detail and can be regarded with a solid amount of caution as to their authenticity. The one clear feature though was that Psy Titans were rarely deployed beyond the realm of terror, and when they were, it was not by the request of any present commander, nor were they deployed in great numbers or for lengthy engagements. They would appear, complete whatever involvement had been ordered to, or was felt necessary, and then they would retreat and disappear again. The explanations for this are speculative at best. Was this as much involvement as had been intended for the Psy Titans as a surgical strike force to dissipate difficult engagements, or were these a trial period for a force that had been planned in actuality to be far larger than it ultimately ended up being? By the time the heresy consumed the galaxy, it's possible that the development of the Ordo was stalled, 
a representative of the Order was brought before the Council of Terror, but at the orders of the Emperor, who during this time had self-sequestered himself, was only authorised to explain that the Ordo Sinister would remain as Terra's last line of defence. It was clarified that they would only operate under command of the Emperor himself and his further exacting orders that had already been laid out to them. They occupied four fortress crypts on Terra with extensive defences, staff, menials and techno archicists each chamber contained five modified Warlord Titans designated as Psy Titans, and these had been rebuilt to the Emperor's own design around a psychic amplification matrix known as a Syracrux Anima, and this stood in place of a standard Titan's Mind Impulse unit. Unlike a standard Titan, Psy Titans were crewed by Psychers, yet crew is perhaps a fairly inaccurate description. The Psychers of a Psy Titan are surgically locked into the machine itself, these psychers are believed to have been placed within these titans either as punishment for crimes against the Imperium or at their own behest to allow them to become part of something more and help alleviate their own personal torment. Either way, they exist as psychic slaves to the will of the commander known as the Preceptor Intendant. This figure was master of the psychic god machine and held direct control over the entombed psychers who were now little more than biomechanical power sources. As to their relative state of consciousness, this can only be speculated upon, but these psychers' powers and spirit will be focused by the Syracrux Anima and are controlled by a techno-arcane interface that is nothing like the standard MIU of other Titans. Its subsidiary systems within the Psy Titan are slaved out to sub-automata, smaller and main machine spirits, which we can probably read as slightly more advanced AI than is usually used. But at the centre of all this is the Preceptor Intendant, who sits within the blank size shielded headpiece of the Titan. However, this shielding was apparently not enough, and so the commander to the Titan is also a null or blank. These individuals are likely one of the rarest of the rare within the Imperium, being both a blank and also capable of commanding a Titan. It's possible these highly specific criteria are why the numbers of Psy Titans are so low, although again, who knows really what the Emperor had planned. Another unknown is the rate at which the psychers held within the machines are consumed by the process of utilising their psychic energy. This has never been clarified, but it seems logical that dependent on the psychers own personal power and the extent of an engagement would all be varying contributing factors in answering this question. Put simply, it's probably just not something that exists as a predefined parameter. Psy Titans employ, as we have explored, numerous offensive weapons, but some are more passive than others, as was demonstrated at Skagen 6. But it's unknown exactly how the Titans were able to seemingly repair themselves when they were engaged by the Eldar Titans. However, due to the nature of psychic powers and the warp, and the fact that we know that the warp can represent time events out of line or out of sync, it's possible that Psy Titans are able to harness this unconstrained temporal power and use it to essentially restore localised areas of themselves before damage was inflicted upon them, if you can wrap your head around that. I guess again to put it simply, they're really reversing the time process of damage upon them. It can also be used offensively, and what has been documented is one of the most powerful weapons of the Psy Titan. Through the Syracrux Anima, the Preceptor will focus the power of the Psychers into a unique weapon known as the Sinistromanus Tenebrae, or its layman name of the Psy Cannon. A mysterious piece of tech, with some of its design likely again originating from deep in the Dark Age of Technology. The rest, perhaps, being of the Emperor's own ingenuity. It's basically a cannibalised warp engine merged with more conventional projectile energy weapons. And the result is that it uses the power of its bound psychers to channel a warp breach much like a ship's warp engine would do, or a vortex weapon. Essentially, it's taking the power of a starship's warp engine to open a portal to the warp, and then turning that into a focused projectile weapon. You might begin to see how this would create a weapon of truly nightmarish insanity. The bolt fired by it is a piece of pure darkness that will pass through whatever it touches and absorb all light until it comes into contact with more dense physical matter, causing it to then detonate and essentially open a portal to the warp, at which point it will consume and shred anything in that space into the immaterium molecule by molecule. Opening a portal to the warp seems like it would be an extraordinarily dangerous thing to do, but thankfully somehow the breach created by the weapon will then self-seal shortly after. 
It's likely that this was the weapon used against the Eldar race, and that this seemingly ambient shockwave that knocked down dead any in its vicinity is due to it acting like an immense psychic gravity well, and any other souls in its nearby area were dragged from the bodies of those into the darkness, leaving their bodies left as dead empty husks. Standard Vortex weapons are scary enough, but they're usually very limited in quantity, but a Psy Titan can theoretically fire its weapon multiple times in relatively short succession, simply as long as its Psyker power source can sustain it. As powerful and intimidating as Psy Titans are, non-Imperial versions are believed to have existed prior to the creation of those by the Emperor. In fact, it is believed that the Mechanicum themselves also had already experimented with the concept, as fragments exist describing things that could be considered Psy Titans even pre-unification. But what became of those machines or their sub-cult Mechanicus factions is unknown. But Psy Titans also existed for the Eldar, who use Psychers in almost everything they do offensively, but also the lesser spoken of races of the Thrall and Vaxolak, all of which were capable of rivaling Imperial Psy Titans in both scale and power. To many, the Warlord Psy Titan is an entity which should not exist at all. Only the Emperor would ever have the authority to create such a machine. A god of war blended with weaponized human psychers, crewed by a soulless commander. Fear being its greatest weapon, it devours hope, joy and life. And to any of those unfortunate enough to be in its presence, it will gift to them only despair. It is not a creation that those which it protect would eagerly cheer for, its power so incomprehensible it often must fight alone, capable of engaging enemy with a weapon of pure darkness that will consume them at a molecular level and for those close to the horror have their literal souls torn from their bodies. The choice to create such machines as Psy Titans speaks to how we may choose to further perceive and speculate upon the Emperor and his greater intentions for humanity. Because as he himself is known to have stated, there are monsters and then there are the monsters we make to fight them. Both are the same. The difference is simply a choice of how we see ourselves. <laughs>